This week we deepen our reflections on online identity, examining issues of performativity and celebrity that are fundamental to contemporary society. We live in amazing times. We live in a time where anyone can make a short video, upload it to the internet and become an instant celebrity. In a time when we can engage with the rich and famous via Twitter and maybe every now and then get a reply from them. In a time when any amateur video can suddenly go viral. Good girl. Good catch. To get a firmer sense of the context with which we are dealing here, here's a short clip from a lecture that Professor David Marshall gave on Online Persona last year. How do we deal with a world that focuses on us producing a public version of ourselves? How do we, how do we negotiate that world? How do we strategically or tactically work our way through that world now that it's changed? What are we going to do? So one's analysis, the second one is what do we do? What do we do as individuals? Because we're the, the image is on us. What are we going to do? Okay. And there's lots of things that we'll look at as we go forward, and I'll come back to that. This is like an objective. Um, so, what can we describe this moment as? Remember I said that structure feeling idea? Well, we could describe it as the selfie moment. Okay. That sounds a little bit, you know, offhand thrown out there, Instagramish. Something like that, but it it's probably kind of true, you know. Just hold on. Oh, I got to turn the camera around. Yeah, um, you, this happens all the time in bedrooms everywhere, <laughs> and it happens elsewhere too. You know, all sorts of different places. Now let's look at some of those things. 130 million Instagram users. Okay. Pretty big. And as you know, different social media have had the same sort of trajectories over the last 10 years. Right? So, but let's just keep it on photos. Let's keep it on photos. Let's look at that form of communication and what it's doing out there. Okay? So the second thing is, well, you know, what does it say there? 220 billion photos on Facebook. 220 billion. Okay, so that is beyond the realm of what we can probably process. Right? It's, it's beyond that. It's almost, it's, it's unfathomable. I'd love us to get to the point by the end of this unit where if I asked you to describe your online identity, you will say that it's dynamic, flexible, diverse, calculated, strategic and effective. Okay, I'm talking to Emma Watman just after she's walked out of three straight ALC 203 seminars. Thanks so much for joining us for another minute or two, Emma. I know you're not quite at your weekend yet. You're welcome. <laughs> well, you've got a very valuable perspective on what I want to briefly touch on now because I just outed myself as my sixth Twitter account, <laughs> which no one really knew about but a few people, um, being Foe the Man as a student <laughs> account. I'm going to actually show some of the tweets awesome. that this student uh, has been tweeting over the past three four weeks and as you can see there's quite provocative stuff here I'm sure a lot of students noticed it but have not necessarily known what to say have wanted to say anything have just been what the hell is this student doing but no one has obviously guessed for very good reasons because it was kind of an authentic representation of a potential student Twitter which has actually been inspired by previous student tweets in part so can you tell us a little bit about the first experience you had with foe the man absolutely um, so I was scrolling through the ALC 203 hashtag and I noticed um, this, this Twitter handle that didn't really have an image uploaded to it, um, but I noticed the, the handle and they were posting some kind of, some. I think the, the term that I used was douchebaggy, was douchebaggy terms, because I was like, is this, is this serious? You and said, what, you, what do you want me to do about this douchebag? <laughs> that's basically what I said. Uh, I spoke to Adam and I said, okay, there's this, there's this student posting these things, what do you want me to do about this douchebag? And Adam just started laughing and let me know that it was actually him and I kind of went into a little bit of shock thinking oh my god I just called my boss a douchebag but uh, it was actually it was pretty interesting for me so um, I took it as, as a serious kind of authentic profile um, yeah so and so that's a pretty interesting thing. Well, there, the interesting thing is that I'm cyberbullying myself and you still <laughs> felt guilty about the fact that you'd called me a douchebag even though it's complete performance. Yeah, absolutely. It was you, you know, you doing it to yourself, but I still felt terrible for calling for calling you a douchebag. Like my first response was like, oh my God, I can't believe I said that. That's all right. My sister's called me that for years. It really doesn't matter. You know, Abby, Abby goes off the handle at me. Um, and you've just told me a few seconds before recording something incredibly interesting because the last tweet I sent from Fro the Man was... Um, 
because uh, you're all your students are tweeting about cyberbullying yes. and identity theft at the moment. So I tweeted out my my ho whole reason to exist. I exist only to bully <laughs> Emma Watman. <laughs> And yeah, go for it. <laughs> so um, I was actually in the middle of teaching and I looked down at my phone and I saw a kind of a Twitter conversation. I said to my students, I'm like, I've just seen the weirdest thing. My best friend is talking to Adam via Twitter. I could see both of their handles kind of appear, but I didn't really realize anything. And then um, got out of class, checked my phone and I had a text message from my best friend saying a screen capture of that particular tweet from Fro the Man uh, saying, is this for real? Question mark. Or is this a joke? And so she was really upset for me. She was like, oh my God, is somebody cyberbullying you? And she, she completely took it as, as authentic. And I just wrote back saying, ha, 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 no. <laughs> uh, and then came a sorry item. Yeah, fantastic. So I guess the whole point of Fo the Man, who will probably continue to follow, he only follows Hulk Hogan, who I actually did have a bit of that a was fandom for. That was the other reason I thought he was a douchebag, because <laughs> he only followed Hulk Hogan. I liked Suburban Commando as a kid, so it was inspired by <laughs> so-called reality in some ways. But, you know, I, I've, I've learned the lesson of my ways. But really, that yeah. Twitter account is something all of our students can look at and think, if any aspect of our Twitter profiles are like this, doing something wrong every single aspect you can it's like a, it's like a checklist yeah. isn't it you look yeah. at every bit don't yeah. do those things because I you know I won't think you're a douchebag but I might be questioning uh, how you're portraying yourself online so yeah. And that goes, and it's not its not the fact that, you know, the offensive stuff at me, that was the douchebag part. <laughs> it was actually the no profile picture, no Absolutely. identification through, I had no you know. idea who the student was. I couldn't, um, I couldn't track at all who they were. And they were posting negative things about the unit, which is something that I thought was very counterproductive to what this unit's trying to do. Yeah, I've got to be careful. I, I've got to be careful not to post too many. Yes. Tweets about it because I didn't want to scare other people off the hashtag, so he hasn't done that much. No, no, but, he hasn't. Uh, I have been liking them lately, though. Yeah, I, think I know. I've so. been the only person that I have. Uh, been liking. One of your students has followed me today as well. <laughs> followed him. Okay. He's going to have a huge following. It's like Tiffany and Fo the Man are now more popular. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you very much for all you're doing no and for talking to us to us today. I'll see you all soon. I got a few emails recently about the focus. How do I focus this blog post? One, don't try and cover everything. One main point I'd say, coming from questions, is that make sure you focus primarily on your own online identity. In, in the past, in some seminars even, we've looked at the broader issue of identity as a whole, and that's what we're doing in this week's topic. But your example, and really what we want you to do is get the value out of it, your example is to be on your own online identity. Not the whole thing, you can't do that. No one could actually encapsulate their whole online identity in a 1,000 words of writing and some other multimedia embedded within it. Don't try and do too much, but it has to be primarily focused on your identity. That's not to say that this topic is irrelevant, because what I said in my, la my last seminar last night is probably... The, one of the best points I can make, and it's not in the instructions or advice. I hadn't thought of it until a student asked. Great writing, not only good writing, but great writing, has always been about the movement between the general, or the universal, and the particular, or the specific. I've done research on, this is going to sound irrelevant, but I've done research on Holocaust survivor testimony. Those Holocaust survivors whose books have been read and reread and reread and reread and set on book lists are those who can move very well between the general and the specific. Why am I even mentioning that? Well, with your blog post, you're looking at the specific, your analysis, you're analysing a particular example. Where your research comes in, that's the general. You're making a general point or argument, or you're engaging with a certain contention around online identity as a whole, and you're using that to introduce or reinforce a point you might make about your own online identity the particular and the specific. So it's kind of what you do with essays all the time, but probably don't think about it that way. The movement between the general and the particular is great writing. And think about it that way, because some people have asked me, can I just do a blog post on online identity as a whole? Not for this assignment. You could do one in the leader, perhaps. But you must make sure that you bring in both those things. Focus on yourself. That's where the real value is. But don't forget the general. And if you bring in research, you're not going to find journal articles on your own online identity, I don't think. So that's where the general comes in and how it intersects with the particular, with the specific. I hope that makes sense. In terms of your focus also, I've had a student even ask, what are you interested in, Adam? 
In one sense, your tutors and I are not interested, your marker, in other ways, not interested in your online identity in a very real sense. Just in the same, as in the same way, you're not really interested in my online identity. You're interested in watching videos and reading blog posts that you might get something out of for this unit, but I don't expect you to want to delve into my gamified, you know, my taller Ewok profile, that kind of thing. What we're really interested in is seeing two things. Number one, we want to see you being interested in your online identity. So don't worry about what might interest me. What interests you will naturally bring out an engaging blog post, and that's number two. We are interested in seeing an engaging blog post. Well written, creative use of multimedia content, bringing in your research in a really effective manner, all that stuff. That's what we want to see. And that's not necessarily any different from other kinds of assessment. We want to see you make an engaging text, your blog post. So hopefully that makes sense as well. Emma just talked to me outside in a, a bit, for a bit of a, um, a few minutes after her seminar, and she mentioned that one of her students was asking another thing about how to bring in this op the options you've got as a, a slide share slideshow, a slide share embedded through slide a slideshow embedded through slideshow, a prezi that you can create, and a lot of people are already doing that. It's fantastic, or an infographic using any of those sites that I've listed in the instructions. What do you do with that? There are conventions, obviously. We've already started to talk about that in seminars. You know, don't use too much text in slideshows and that kind of thing. Dot points are fantastic. Don't just try and make it, you know, huge content within it. It can actually be quite simple and effective. The main thing is that it needs to be integrated. And I don't mean just embedded or screen captured, like I've said in the instructions. Your content has to fit your blog post. So you want to discuss, to some degree, you can see what I do in my example, it doesn't have to be in a lot of detail for all of it, but you don't want to just throw in a few pictures because you think they look pretty. They should be integrated and make a point in themselves. They need to relate to the written blog post as well, because that's the whole point. I could take you through, and I might in this seminar, I won't for Periscope, but I could take you through the latest blog post I did, and all of those pictures, to varying degrees, and the embedded video, not that you're doing that for this assignment, that's a later one, all of that complements the meaning that I'm making in the text. So you want to structure it so that your content is not just thrown in to get, you know, so you've got one, two, three tweets or whatever. You don't want to just do it like a checklist. You want to think, how do I make a really engaging blog post through writing and bringing in some other content to complement and enhance my meaning? So hopefully that, that helps as well. That's what some people have already started to do. And the other question that I've been asked is how to start a blog post. Just start one. Um, I've, I've answered uh, questions about tone and that kind of thing. You know, it's not the best way to start a blog post by saying the postmodern post construction or the postmodern conceptualization of identity, blah, blah, blah. You could start with a vignette. You could start with an example. Two sentences, three sentences to capture the reader's attention. This is not an intro body conclusion kind of thing. Although you'll see with my latest blog post that I do bring it back in the middle and at the end to the main theme, my example. And I do make, even without using scholarship in that blog post, I do move between the general and the specific. Again, that's the hallmark of good writing. That's what you want to aim for. You've done it all before, it's just you haven't probably thought about it like that. So, how to start? You could actually do one or two before you do your main blog post. You could actually link do a link in your blog post to a previous post where you start to explore some ideas. Some students, if you look at the hashtag, have already started to do that. And I wanted to again say thank you for those two students who are doing it. The Tiffets are streaming in. So is there any questions at all? That's gone on for a little bit longer than I thought, but hopefully it does help. This week's video, the digital media, the, uh, what's it called? The digital media snapshot had more advice. Next week's will also have more advice. They're all, it's all in there, you've got to keep up. No questions? You want me to stop because it's going to get heavy, isn't it? And hot? You feeling the heat out of the iPad? I'm going to shut up. Thank you very much. I'd love you to name yourself just so you can get the credit. You don't want to. Jess. <laughs> Thank you, Jess. Cheers, everyone. Please note not only the day of the due date, but also the time. I've scheduled deadlines very strategically in this unit in order to discourage the possibility of leaving things until the last minute as much as possible. And if this is frustrating, just blame Tiffany, it was her idea. So if you have a few spare minutes now, you might like to jump on Twitter and join in on a conversation. 
or at least stalk a few celebrities to see how they construct their online personas. And speaking of celebrities, apologies again to Matt Damon, who I was really looking forward to having on the Me Lecture this week. But again, we've ran out of time. Goodbye.